This is version 3, now with the power latch circuit and button wired up. This one's never suffered anywhere near as much temperature drift as version 2. So I'm going to continue with the experiments on this one to upgrade it and improve it. Now I didn't see much point in using the more expensive NRF52832 or 840, which is the Arduino Nano Bluetooth Low Energy, until I learn how to put Ant Plus onto them. But I wanted to move away from a typical Uno or Nano, which uses the Atmega 328P, and try a different microcontroller. So I chose the Nano Every, which uses an Atmega 4809. And when I went to compile the code to put it onto this different microcontroller, I came across a problem because I use timer interrupts and to do that I set it up using direct references to registers. Now of course being a different microcontroller this uses different registers. So I went onto the datasheet and worked out how to do it and once I've done that uploaded the code and it ran for five seconds and then would freeze. I tracked down the issue to the analog read which goes on in the one kilohertz interrupt. Now the um, thing is with the IDE, when you do a typical analog read, it sets up the registers in a way that we don't actually know. We could probably find out it's buried deep in the IDE somewhere. But I thought now's the time to learn how to set up the ADC using direct references to the registers. I'm going to try and explain how I measure the strain gauge voltage using two timer interrupts. The first one is run at a rate of 1 kilohertz. So if we draw a representation of the strain gauge voltage, pretty irregular. In that interrupt, we're doing a, just a standard basic analog read at um, obviously a rate of 1 kilohertz, which means it's um, a period of 1 millisecond between samples. Also in that interrupt is a running average, and that's taking a running average over a period of 50 milliseconds. So that then, the output of that interrupt is a much smooth representation of the strain gauge voltage. We then have the second timer interrupt, which is running at a rate of 100 hertz. And that's then sampling this with a period, obviously, of 10 milliseconds between samples. That interrupt, the 100 hertz interrupt, is also measuring cadence. So it adds up the average for a complete rotation of the crank. And that then gives, obviously, the um, value that you can use to calculate the average torque for a rotation. What I'm going to do is hand over all of the control to the ADC itself. So instead of demanding that it does a sample every one millisecond, we're going to put it into what's called free run mode. So basically what that means is as soon as the result that it presents is red, it will just continue to sample. So it's basically sampling continuously. We're also going to max out the number of samples that it takes before it presents a result. So that maximum will be 64 in our case. Um, and then we're going to set it up so that when it has a result to present, it's going to cause an interrupt and that interrupt we're going to clock the ADC so that the interrupt will occur around about 100 Hertz so that's going to be our interrupt that will measure the cadence and calculate the average for a crank rotation now the result of this is that the sampling rate will increase from 1 kilohertz to 6.4 and this is then going to become our averaging period, so the averaging will drop from 50 milliseconds down to 10. 
So now let's go on to the IDE and show you the actual code and how to make this uh, work. This is not going to be a detailed lesson on how to use registers because I'm not very familiar with them myself. It's just going to be a very brief look at what's possible. So here's the setup of the ADC. Now each of these lines refer to a different register. So obviously we're dealing with the ADC, and it's ADC0. We only have one anyway, and it's register control A. And then these refer to the different um, bits that can be configured or group of bits. So if you look at the uh, data sheet, this is a summary of the different registers we can change. So control A, for example, we have these different bits. Sometimes it's a group of bits, as I said. So we're going to enable it and set it to free run mode. So that's what this is going to do here. And the BM sounds for bit mask. So it's just one bit. If it's more than one, we do a group configure, GC. So the uh, second register we're going to change is this one. Now this is something I don't think the uh, basic Nano or Uno has. And that is to accumulate some samples before giving a result. So in this case we're going to set it to 64 samples. It's going to accumulate before it um, gives that result. And in control C, uh, this is setting out the capacitor if the uh, voltage reference is greater than 1. I'm not fully understanding exactly what that's about, but it doesn't really matter. Just configure it and then we've got the ADC clock, so that's going to be the uh, main clock divided by this number here. I've chosen the maximum number. The main clock is run at either 16 or 20 megahertz. So we're going to divide that by 256 and then divide it by 13 because that's the number of clock cycles it takes to do an actual sample. And then obviously divide that by the 64, because that's the number of samples it's going to take before giving a result. And that should give an interrupt of around 75 hertz. Might actually increase that a bit by uh, changing some of these, these values, or maybe even adding a, a delay in, which is what this one does here. Um, this is just setting the uh, reference voltage, and that will be the uh, supply voltage. So this is the um, delay that you can put in, so that will be number of clock cycles. I think it's a maximum of 15, I think. Um, and this is uh, setting up the pin. So it's not um, referring to the actual pin, it will be known as analog in 3. So you have to look that up in the data sheet. And that refers to pin A0. We then start the ADC and put it into interrupt mode. And this is the interrupt here. So because we're doing an accumulation of 64 samples, before it gives a result, if you want something that we're used to, so that's like maximum of 1023, then you have to divide the result by 64. And that's pretty much a summary of, of some of the basics that you can set up. There are a few more obviously in the data sheet. Finally let's have a look at the output. This is running a little bit slower than I was going for. It's a 4.8 kilohertz sampling and 75 hertz interrupt. The um, red line that represents the time between samples, that's around 13 to 14 milliseconds. Uh, I can still see is it picking up a little bit of interference, so I can a bit of smoothing slightly longer between um, samples would be better. So on that is the green line, which is a running average of four samples, which I think is about perfect. That's uh, 50 milliseconds, which I had on the previous one kilohertz interrupt. It's really it's a compromise between getting rid of the interference and still being responsive, and this is nice and responsive. 
So that's it for the ADC at the moment. Um, next I want to sort out a regulator for the strain gauge voltage because the position of this at zero varies massively depending on the exact voltage you feed to the strain gauges and different Arduinos have different voltages so it can be a bit of a nuisance um, when things change and obviously there's other things on the uh, Arduino regulator so that can affect things as well so I'm going to set up a separate regulator for that on the amplifier circuit board around the back of the crank there. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.